the Gators here uh, in this, you know, third rushing touchdown of the night for Anthony Richardson. Uh, this is via Kendra Douglas uh, over at WESH here. But, uh, but just, you know, that was the game-winning touchdown. That was the one. That was the thing. Let's, uh, let's look at some of the stats here. Uh, scroll it back down here. So, Florida. Let's, uh, let's discuss the stats. Um, 7.83 offensive yards per play for Florida. 451 total yards to only 446 there. Uh, only one turnover for Florida to two for Utah. Um, Utah had a better third down percentage. Florida went forward on fourth down twice and got both of them, which you can do when you got a dude like Anthony Richardson. Uh, seven scoring opportunities. Seven drives inside the opponent's 40 for Utah to only four for Florida. But Florida had 5.25 points per scoring opportunity to only 3.86 for Utah here. And Utah, their starting field position was 10 yards better than Florida's. I mean, that is just absurd. Uh, this, it, Anthony Richardson is just a different kind of dude. It, it's, it is, I, I, I hesitate to compare it, but man, does he remind you of Cam Newton, the way that he can throw the ball, the way he can pass it. And I'm so curious, what was it about Dan Mullen's offense that wouldn't allow Anthony Richardson to just explode? Because I'd said last year that I thought Anthony Richardson was the better quarterback, and I have talked all offseason on the Bet US show, on here, etc. When Billy Napier was hired, that offense that Billy Napier runs with uh, with Rob Sale is tailor-made for a quarterback like Anthony Richardson. It highlights all of his best features, all of his best qualities as a quarterback, and, and hides some of the deficiencies. So if you're Dan Mullen, who was there last year, why would you not reshape the offense? That is the sign of a good coach, is reshaping the offense to fit it around the talent that you've got. I just don't understand how. And yes, Anthony Richardson is another year older now, et cetera. But, whew, uh, just completely different here. Utah, uh, the story of the game here is just, you, you get first and goal twice and come away with zero points. Now, I understand that you're on the road, but, I mean, that's the that's the story of the game. That's how you lose that game. 29-26 to 26 final, and... And you had two goal line opportunities that you did not score on. I mean, that is just, that is brutal. Absolutely brutal. Uh, but yeah, looking looking at, of course, the win probability, et cetera, this was, you know, a pretty exciting game because it went back and forth, as you can see there on the screen. This is uh, via gameonpaper.com. They, uh, they keep up with all this. I mean, the expected points, both of these offenses were great. They were awesome. Um, soft of the earth jumps in, play with what you got. Yeah. Uh, Kane Cards jumped in. I agree, Gary. Mullen can recruit quarterbacks. Why was Emory Jones playing last year? That's the question. Like, and and yeah, Emory Jones may have been a little bit better passer last year, but man, you better reshape that offense. Like Dan Mullen, you figured out a way to make Nick Fitzgerald successful or successful. I mean, what are we talking about? Like Joe Moorhead couldn't figure out a way to do that. <laughs> I mean, just unbelievable. So, yeah, it's it's irritating. It's irritating, but, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, the Anthony Richardson numbers here, uh, just just mind-blowing stuff. 17 out of 24, 168 yards passing, but he had 11 carries for 106 yards and three touchdowns. Like, he was a one-man wrecking crew. Uh, Ricky Pearsall uh, was awesome. Four receptions, 67 yards. Xavier Henderson, um, six receptions, 41 yards. Like, looking at Utah, like, Utah's not a bad team. Tavion Thomas, 23 carries, 115 yards. Uh, they had 230 yards on the ground. Cam Rising was able to have a ton of success. Um, <laughs> salt to the earth jumps in. Utah will win the Mountain West every year. Uh, Utah is a really, really good football team. Like a really good football team. Them losing this game was not uh, was not bad, right? Um, let's see, Keithy, the tight end. Uh, nine receptions, 105 yards, and one touchdown here. Uh, Florida could not figure out a way to match up with those guys. Uh, they, Their defense, the Gators' defense, could not stop Utah at all. So, yeah, you that's why you try and run the clock out towards the end of the game there uh, when you haven't scored yet, right? You're, there's a lot of weird things. Um, it's it's interesting. It's interesting. I was I was very surprised 
with the way that that game went. Um, but it, I thought it was awesome, for sure. I uh, hope I'm guessing you guys did as well. <laughs> That's what I'm guessing is that you guys did as well. All right, let's hit on the blowout of the day here, and obviously we're not going to spend all of it. Uh, Kane Carter jumped in. Utah was cramping all game. You could tell the environment was infecting them. Yeah, uh, 81% humidity down there, a uh, little warm. Utah aren't used to that. They are not used to that at all. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.